Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for High Velocity Radio. Lee Cantor here, another episode of High Velocity Radio, and this is going to be a good one. Today we have with us Samuel Opon. Welcome, Samuel. Thank you very much. I'm excited to learn what you're up to. Share a little bit about your work. Uh, you're a busy guy doing a lot of interesting things. Uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, before I talk to you, I'm going to say that I'm in the middle of, of packing up and moving to a new new place. But uh, other than that, um, I've been really busy finishing up my master's degree program um, at Concord University in Chicago. I'm also going there to um, further a career in broadcasting in sports broadcasting, but also um, having a career um, outside of it in business. So like consulting, um, training, public speaking, and and coaching. So now um, talk about kind of your journey. You you have an interesting background. Um, So basically when I was born, um, I was literally separate from my parents, my biological parents, and I was in a hospital going through chemotherapy um, for about two years, maybe six months or something like that. Um, for having malaria, for having um, non hodgkin lymphoma, which is not fun. Um, and I was going there. My mom had to make a decision to leave me behind. She can't. She couldn't be there. And and basically, it became like a whole big like press. Um, yeah, it, 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 um, it became like a huge thing. And for some reason. Um, went through the process, got chemotherapy, finished, and then it placed me with um with like step parents. I call them step parents because they became like my legal guardian until like my parents went through the process, going through the courtroom and becoming legal guardians till they proved that they, they could pick income in the US because they went through a program. So my parents came to America with the lottery. And and, and then so then when you grew up and you went through this hardship, and um, what kind of drew you to the business world? Um, so, so when I so as I was coming, I got into the acting in the acting business, and during the during that time, I was doing Broadway, doing um, theater, a lot of theater work as a kid uh, before I moved to the West Coast. And when I came to the West Coast, they um, I met a person on the airplane, or it's like going on the airplane. And they wanted me to connect with John Maxwell. So I didn't really know too much about John Maxwell at all. I thought I had no idea who that man was in my entire life, <laughs> to tell you the truth. And then they also wanted me to connect with um, Warren Buffett because they wanted me to make a career out of myself. They don't want me to sit, sit there and do anything. They wanted me to make income. So um, so got in contact with them, um, crossed paths with them when I was like five, six years old and started to train, train with them um, ever since. So I, I focused more on investing than I did in public speaking. Public speaking, public speaking was not something that I wanted to do. I focused more on investing because I, um, it, it became a lot more of a better habit and I like it. So got into that and I'm still investing 20 years later. Um, but for public speaking, got the same thing for John Maxwell, uh, met with him talked about his vision, talked about the impact and the future of public speaking. And it, um, so that's how I got into the business, through him. So now uh, let's talk right now about the public speaking. So how do you, do you develop a talk? How, how did you know what to talk about? Um, so we, we went through the process of writing down different types of topics that I can write about. I can talk about like lead with love. I can talk about um, teaching people how to invest. So invest in one-on-one, which is a course that I'm creating. So in that course. So now how did you develop that kind of methodology about how to invest? Like this is for any, oh, uh, any stage so, investor or beginner investors? Um, beginner investors. We got to start, we got, you got to start with the playbook. You got to know the playbook of investing before you become like a pro, like a pro investor. You got to know the entire playbook of it. All right. So then in your talk, you go over kind of the um, kind of the basics of that. Yes. Yes. But I also talk about I also do that with my course. 
So now, so the the speaking is kind of an entree into the course. Um, yes, but I also I also do like motivational speaking. I also do inspirational speaking. I also do um, business leadership. Like I'm very I'm very, I'm very flexible. And then, do they? Does your client come to you and say, "Hey, can you do a talk on this subject?" Or do you go to them and say, "You know what? For your needs, I think I should be doing a leadership talk." Um. So for the so when I did my first public speaking when I was four years old, I did it at a high school. They came to me. The second public speaking I did when I was six or so. Um. When I yeah six or so they came to me and they wanted to teach teach them like leadership, um leadership um studies and then the third one I did was around like eight years old and I did a little bit, um it was more it was more of like a like a host but more like um the panel like a panel discussion but it it talked about like they wanted me to talk about like transition from like like going from Africa to the U S. Now, uh, so part of your uh, journey has been to actually invest in in companies, right? Yes. So now, how did you get involved in that kind of uh, side of the investment business? There's one thing to just invest in mutual funds, but you're actually t- taking positions in like startups and uh, and companies. Uh, so they so they send referrals. So I created a website, um, my personal website, and they send me referrals. And they also contact me through LinkedIn. They also send me like other websites to do. And the first question I always ask myself is what kind of career or what kind of like impact are they going to have in the next five, 10 years? That's the first question that I always um, ask myself. Is this something that is worthwhile and worth my money that I want to invest in? So now, so I, like what yeah, through, yeah. are you, are you investing um, like thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars? Um, it varies. It varies. I can I can do fifty dollars. I can do a thousand dollars. I do I, I do up to like five thousand. And then, how do you decide? Like, okay, this one I'm going to invest in. This one I'm going to pass on. Um, because because I always well one I always go through the the safety net of of um going through the financial company to look at to see to have them like scan everything they i think all, every, every single company that i always do is they go through a background background work because i need to know everything about the person i need to know everything about the business and then what are some like red flags where you'll be like now nope, this is out if they if they never if they never invested before and they tell me that it's worth twenty five thousand dollars per uh, minimum so that's if, one I know that if if it's worth twenty five thousand dollars and they have never they have never raised funds for the company, then it's a red flag. Now, what's something that gets you excited? Uh, I, I always I always look at the trailblazers. I always look at the game changers, like something that we have never seen before. Think like Airbnb, like think about it, like DoorDash, like think about like those kind of companies, like. Who would have thought that you know, ten years later, like those companies were going to have a better, bigger impact? Spotify, same thing. Who would think that millions of people around the world is going to listen to music right now during a pandemic? So now, when you're hanging out with your friends, are are they investors too, or is this something unusual amongst I, your friend group? I, I, I don't bring it up because I don't want them to be thinking that I'm so much different than them. I I always keep everything normal. So, so for your friends, they just see you as just that you're just one of the the gang there, right? The normal normal person talking to them, asking them on what they're doing with their life. I never I never ask them about money. I never talk about it. I don't speak about it. Now, do you help them with your coaching background? Are you able to coach them up and help them make better decisions? Um, I will. I mean, if they ask, I, I can do that. But only if they ask. You're not kind of going out of your way to, hey, hey, buddy, that's not, you should be doing less of that and more of this. Right. Because, because once they come into the, into the twish, um, fruition and the in, intuition and their mindset of they wanted to change the way that they're doing things and they ask me like where, where they could go from here, then I will, I'll point them, to the, point, the, point them the direction to me. 
But for now, I prefer I prefer them to enjoy their life, enjoy the freedom, enjoy what they're doing. But but whatever you do, don't talk about money in front of me because it's not something that I do. Now, how important is sports to you? <laughs> it, it, I mean, I grew up with it because when I was when I was four or five years old, um, living in Alberta, New York, um, I went there and I was the only African American and black person in my class. It was a private private school, so I was able to develop um, my love for baseball before I love basketball. So now, now, um, how, how would you see sports kind of um, playing into your career as you move forward? I mean, it's gonna it's gonna change. I I I like how how it brings it brings a different momentum. It brings a different way of how we learn because the game the game right now is about a game of inches. You know what I mean by game of inches? Like you like you the the you have to pay strong details to every single play and every single action like if you need to slow down just slow down take deep breaths you need to understand the game and become i mean sorry you need to understand the game and become a student of the game understand the principle understand the playbook of it just like the business you need to know the playbook you need to know the playbook of investing once you know that knowledge you should be ready to go so you see a lot of similarities between sport and um, also uh, business, right? And I, I always, I always, t- I always take, um, I always bring like information from each side and try to see like if there's some, some um, similarly and differences, and see like what where can I go from here. Now let's talk a little bit about your podcast uh, that focuses on basketball. No, it, it focuses on all sports. All sports? All sports. But is it college and professional? Any any type of sport? Um all, any any sports, but I also I also talk about the issues. The one thing the one thing I don't talk about in my podcast is politics. So you you, you separate politics from uh, sports? Yes, because because before before I transitioned into the world of sports, I worked for the government. That's that's a long story right there. So there was a time when you were considering uh, politics? No, no, no. They no, they came to me in my school and offered me the opportunity to work for them. And then you passed. No, 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 no. They asked they asked me some they asked me some questions. I was like, what, like fourth grade? I was, I was like probably like what, like 10, 11, 12 years old. I didn't have no idea what they were asking me because my English wasn't developed at that time. Right. I didn't speak. I didn't speak English till I was like, who? I think like 12, 11, 12 years old. So you were doing some of your speaking uh, before you fully uh, were comfortable in English. No, 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 no. I spoke. I spoke English when I came to America, and then when I moved in with my biological parents, they wanted me to stop speaking English. Uh, so I had to speak a different language. And then when I was when I transitioned from private school to public school, I had to um, either pick, uh, pick French or Spanish. So now in your career, how do you see things uh, going forward? It seems like the sky's the limit for you. Um. Right. Well. Okay. Well. Right. Right now, I'm getting ready to get ready to do auditions for like TV shows and films and movies. But also down the road, I hope to go back into Broadway. I'll say down the road, but in terms of um, business wise, I I I plan on um, starting right away once I finish my master's degree program. Okay, so th- you still have a little w- a little ways to go from that to finish that. No, no, I got like five, I got five six weeks left. Oh, this is the end. This is the last semester for you. Yes. So exciting time. Oh yeah, definitely. But it's it's, it's going to feel very weird. It's gonna, it's going to feel very weird to not be in school at all. Which I'm glad. <laughs> right. Well, you're done with that stage, right? Well, I guess you'll always be a lifelong learner. Right. Yeah, and 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 that's and that's the, that's the other thing too. Like, how far are you going to be willing to learn? Because there's always something to learn each and every single day. Like, the slower that you go, the easier it is for you to process the information and understand what's happening. 
So now if somebody wants to connect with you to hire you as a speaker or maybe to kind of let you know what uh, maybe they need an angel investor, what's the website to get a hold of you? Uh, my my personal website, which is www.samuelopong.com. And that's S-A-M-U-E-L-O-P-P-O-N-G.com? Correct. Well, Samuel, congratulations on all the success and thank you for sharing your story today. Thank you very much. All right, this is Lee Cantor. We'll see you all next time on High Velocity Radio. 